Alright guys, uh, so here's my video on hop ups and I'm Galapagos J and welcome to my channel and hope you enjoy this video. Now um, for gel blasters, uh, hop ups are applied very differently and right now on the market there are many many different versions of what a hop up means. Um, there are 3D printed versions, there are nylon and metallic versions and you know at the end of the day the hop up is really just there to apply a spin to the gel ball as it exits the barrel so that you know it does the trajectory does not go down but rather it should stay straight or slightly go up now I have tried many different versions of hop ups I have tried 3d printed ones you know whatever all the ones that I've mentioned just then various different sizes and all that but generally the uh, you know when you buy these it, it's, it usually comes with two plates right so as you can see uh, I don't know if you can see that yeah it has an upper plate and the bottom plate now the simpler hop ups only have the upper plate now the bottom plate is sort of like there to apply a counter sort of spin to the gel ball but at the end of the day it really doesn't do that uh, because if you're you're like trying to squeeze the gel ball in two different directions and hoping that it will just spin up <laughs> so um it's sort of like a strange theory in a way but uh, uh, a lot of hop ups actually apply that effect you know quite generously but uh, I have found that you know after many times trying to tweak this kind of crap <laughs> it, it doesn't work it doesn't work very much now this is the war interest hop up it's currently on the market most popular hop up basically anyone uh, you know who plays with gel blaster would have one or two at home um, the benefit of this is relatively cheap it's not 3d printed so it doesn't break easily and it also has two uh, sort of like little uh, screws where you can adjust the height of both plates now like I said applying you know both plates really doesn't um, help much because uh, the top plate actually has grooves, so that's the one where it applies most of the spin. Whereas the bottom plate is really just there to, you know, keep the ball squeezed in a way. Um, but because it's a flat plate, it doesn't really uh, sort of apply equal pressure to the entire circumference of the gel ball. So uh, a company, not a company, but a little studio or a workshop so to speak, uh, called Sweetheart, which maybe you have heard of. They um, started the, you know, getting to gel ball through hop-ups. They make a lot of different hop-ups and they make very strange looking hop-ups as well. And their hop-ups are slightly different. So um, the way they do it is they have a top plate and they do also apply pressure from the bottom, but from the bottom, they actually have two metallic rods. So in a way you're having like a three point squeeze for so it looks it sort of looks like that uh, for the gel ball now their explanation for that is to apply more equal pressure to all sides of the gel ball so that as it exits the barrel the deformity of the ball is not as great so that it its uh, trajectory does not get affected as much and although I never tried any of those uh, previous iterations that they made I tried one that they recently released into the public as a beta test product and I can tell you it's actually a very good product. Um, it's very good quality and it actually, um, like for example, if, if you have one of those tighter outer barrels and you have like a, uh, you want to add a silencer or flash hider or whatever, like the war interest, this kind of pop up. Uh, you usually have to apply it after the outer barrel and after the screws where you screw on the uh, flash hider or the silencer so it really limits the option of you know what kind of flash hider or what what kind, what kind of silencer you can put on you know if you have like uh, you know some designs that you like 
but for me personally i i actually apply the uh glow in the dark tracer a lot and this sort of setup really does not let me do it so uh this new product that released uh that's released by sweetheart actually solves that problem beautifully because uh here it is it comes in a pack of four and basically it's four different levels of spin applied uh to the hop up so it's a stationary hop up you cannot adjust it but there are four different levels you can change it out as you test your trajectory which is great uh obviously the higher power uh rifles you don't need as much of a hop up as the you know slower muzzle velocity ones uh, i generally use level two which is like not too much and not too low either um but yeah uh up to now i've applied it to every rifle that i have every you know submachine gun whatever and it's performed very well and it lets you it gives you a lot more flexibility and sort of like uh applying silencers flash hiders whatever so a good example that i have is the vector now vector as you may already know has a very short barrel okay now if i apply one of these you're looking at um, something like this you know inside okay so uh what you would typically do is that if you have a three-way right and a tube all right put it in there and you just slide it on and that becomes a part of your inner barrel so the same principles would apply from my pre previous video if you want to sort of like fix the inner tube to the uh, outer barrel then you just put the electrical tape on around it and that's how I did it for all of my uh, guns as well but uh, going back to the vector if you look at the barrel you can't really see much okay uh, let me see if I can apply some light to it uh, hold on so here so as you can see inside right there's the sweetheart hop up applied now it's hidden inside so that when I want to apply just a normal flash hider to make it look better or a tracer it's flexible I can just screw it on and it won't have a problem with the width or whatever you know taking up all the space because if you look at this more interest hop up see how that you know affects that sort of setup it's already as wide as the thread so you know it's very difficult to apply any you know all sorts of different designs to what you want in terms of flash hider and you know uh, tracer setups or whatever so the benefit of this low profile hop up is actually quite nice second thing is it's very easy to use you know you just slot it in you know you, you twist it sort of like to to make sure that uh, it's in the right direction so if if you have a I'll, I'll do a close-up picture of this later but if if you look closely on on the top like uh, the one that is supposed to be the top side there is a dot that indicates the level of hop up that has been applied so it there are like one two four dots and it's easy to tell you apply it you know you, you sort of turn it to the, the correct direction then you stick some electrical tape on it and that's it you know and you're good to go and that's how I've done it for every single rifle I have uh, I highly recommend this because it just gives you so much more flexibility with um, how you do your uh, barrel setup and all that stuff and this uh, sort of uh, hop up it's designed to fit very snug onto the inner barrel as well so it it won't have any like loose vibrations or whatever onto it you just need to apply the electrical tape to make sure it's you know stuck on the in the right direction and then you're good to go so in terms of hop up uh that's that's my recommendation again this is a very short video i just i just wanted to do this uh video as a very you know general uh, recommendation now um, these guys have come up with a different version where the hop-up is actually adjustable but it's a one-time thing so uh, once you have adjusted it like the way they, they did it is that they um, made the top plate 
uh, actually movable. To apply the hop up, you actually stick a toothpick into that area so that you sort of apply this. Uh, you're, you're squeezing it, uh, or not squeezing it, but making the plate sort of bigger or smaller, or whatever. And once you're satisfied with the amount of hop up applied, you clip the uh, um, toothpick and then you just apply glue onto it and it becomes a permanent hop up uh, at that particular you know angle and I, I think the flexibility of that is very low because uh, first of all you have to like literally you have to play around with the toothpick in and out whatever uh, for a long time until you get the perfect trajectory um, second of all is it's permanent so you can't really remove it and then do it all over again so you have to buy multiple to sort of uh, get like if you screw up you have to get multiple to to get the right hop up effect so this pack of four comes with one to four that's i think that's the best because before you apply the electrical tape to fix it into place you just pull it out plug it different one in until you get the right one and then uh, their shop also sells each level separately as well you can buy a pack of four of the same level of hop up or you can buy a pack of one two three four to test out which one you like and then you buy more of that now I I think I spent around 10 to 15 Australian dollars for a pack so it's very cheap and if you have four different rifles it's very possible that you know if you get one two three four you can have one two three four on all those four different rifles you know just yeah just make sure you test it out so it's actually really a great product i, I highly recommend this um uh another reason why i thought this was such a great product and that is like i said all the other hop-ups just apply, apply a top and a bottom plate uh, the different variants of it could just be like a, a horizontal fix onto the plate itself so that it's actually sturdy or whatever but it's still a top and bottom sort of squeeze but this one looks more like a you know uh, I don't know if you can see it but it's more of an evolution to the earlier uh, sweetheart hop ups where it's a top plate and two rods at the bottom so this kind of shape uh, applies a more even pressure to the ball so when we first tried these we actually saw a very significant change to the trajectory because our gel blasters man we've tweaked it to very very powerful levels and the problem with that is the high, higher power you are the worse the trajectory gets okay because of the spin and all that stuff it's just gonna go all over the place the higher the power, the more the gel ball be falling as well. So um, we could not find a reasonable hop up until this guy came along. And when we saw this guy, and then eventually the match gel balls, you'd, you'd be able to do laser sharp sort of trajectory. I mean, that's a bit pushing it, but at least the spread would be significantly a lot better than without these and the match elbows because the match elbows they don't deform as easily and these guys apply very equal pressure to the match elbows as well so at the end of the day it actually you know combined with the two and also the inner barrel setup that i actually recommended all these factors put together you can expect a much improved trajectory if you have a very high powered setup now uh high powered setup would be anything from let's say 90 meters per second or up okay uh, at 85 you start to see trajectories go crazy a little bit but not as much but at 90 it goes all over the place especially with milky so anything beyond that you need copper tubes match gel balls this sort of uh, hop up where it applies equal pressure to all around the gel ball and also like a gel ball stopper and proper airtight seal um, and also the fix of the inner barrel with the outer barrel you know at different points along the length of the inner barrel 
all of this together you can expect a much better trajectory and much better range um, I mean depending on how hard the spring is that you have like whatever rating it is um, 30 to 40 meters is not a problem so it's actually uh, pretty good uh, you know uh, but anyway that's uh, that's what we're getting on average right now but we're trying to still push further than that I mean we want to push for 50 to 60 meters that could be a very big undertaking because with the intrinsic properties of a gel ball being so soft uh, so you know uh, like uneven because you can't expect every gel ball to be the same size unfortunately and uh, a lot of the times uh, some gel balls might like even with matte gel balls if you soak a bunch some could be 0.1 millimeter smaller some can be uh, a bit less hard it's weird because uh, it's not actually all in the same hardness but in general it's harder much harder than milkies and the red ones but anyway so uh, with these things in mind uh, currently speaking it's still quite hard to push for fi beyond 50 meters the furthest we got was uh, 45 but that's really an effective range anyway because the ball is able to shoot in a straight line up to 45 but at the 45 point that's more like just a little tap on the shoulder and if you have gear on and all that stuff you wouldn't even be able to feel it so uh, the effective range right now is still around 30 to uh, 35 to 40 meters uh, and then after that it just deteriorates uh, a lot so yeah anyway that's uh, my two cents on hop-ups and uh, hope you guys uh, you know have if you guys have any ideas share it with me what uh, hop-up setups or what you know what other different hop-ups is available in your country maybe you guys have different completely different products so uh, it'd be nice to really see what you guys are using as well so anyway um, talk to you later and see you in the next video peace